This is Andy Perrault for Boxing News. I'm joined by Michael Conlon over Zoom. Michael, always a pleasure to catch up with you. You've obviously got a fight to talk about as well now. Uh, before we come on to that, though, how are you? How is life? I'm good, mate. Just in Miami now, uh, chilling out between sessions. Early start for me over here. It's only, uh, I think now it's like three something, or sorry, Satan three something. It's like almost one o'clock, and I've been up first session done at 6 a.m., next session at 3 p.m. So, all is good. First session at six is that because of your adjusting back to the Miami time? Oh, yeah. oh it's it's the the heat and stuff to try and make sure because on track and all that there. So doing a lot of running and stuff today, and obviously the the time you know when the sun is down is probably best to, to get those type of sessions in. That's fair enough, Mick. And um, as I said at the beginning of this interview, um, we spoke about a few weeks back and you said you had something lined up, but you didn't want to say it until it was confirmed. And it was confirmed this past weekend. Yourself and Jordan Girl will be facing each other in Belfast on December 2nd. Uh, excited, relieved to have uh, a new date underway now for you to have something to focus towards. Yeah, mate, big time. Um, you know, new Lisa Leaf over here, getting the training and having, having that focus on a fight now. And, you know, I know Jordan, so it, 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 it'll be a good fight, and I know it's one I'll, I'll, I'll look good at. I've seen you say that you've previously sp um, spent some rounds together in sparring. How long ago was that, and can you take much away from that? Uh, it's, it's sparring, sparring. No, you can take everything away from anything. So, um, yeah, you can take stuff away from it. was back in 2018, so we both evolved as fighters. We both have... Lost some of their belts now. Uh, I'm unsure if Enki lost to Tinico not long after that, but um, yeah, it was a uh, sparring, you know, in sparring, sparring. Uh, I saw obviously the first time you faced off on the weekend, you seemed to uh, mutter a few words. I, I don't think it was picked up on in any audio. What did you say to him? Be <sighs> honest, I can barely remember what I said. <laughs> I'm gonna hurt you or something like that. Just uh, and waste them all, all the luck in training camp. That was it. Uh, for you, Mick, what? How does this fight, you know, play out? Obviously, we've seen Jordan suffer the, the stoppage defeat to Kiko Martinez. I'm sure he'll have his own demons that he'll want to overcome because he he hasn't fought since then. Yeah, you know, um, I think I I, I get Jordan out of there, but I think at the start it can be tricky. Um. No, he's a, he's a nice boxer when he when he has to and at the start he kind of starts at a high enough pace and uh, it may take me a few rounds but I think I'll break him down and and take him out. I've asked you this. I've asked Josh Warren to miss. You know, kind of you go back to you know your loss to Lee Wood, Josh's defeat to um defeat to uh Kiko Martinez where he broke his jaw. When you kind of go through those instances, do, does it create mo a doubt in your own mind as to when you first step back between the ropes? If maybe when you get landed on, does doubt start to creep into your mind at all? And when you look at it from Jordan's perspective, is that something which maybe you'll want to capitalise on because like I say, he hasn't fought since that loss. Yeah. It, like I think the sooner you get back in the better. Um the kind of get away anything they stir like, yeah, I thought I just lost and in May and you know you could say the same about me you know like is there any different but I think I showed it you know after I fought Leewood I went and fought Miguel Moraga who had pretty near double my fights and knockouts already so um I don't think uh it's not something that'll bother me um but with jo in Jordan's case you know he, he had two fights in a row where you know, he took heavy damage and you know pulled one out of the bag with Gurphy and then with Kiko, you know, he went down a numerous of times and kind of took a, a, a beating, but, you know, uh, just ended up just talking at the end. So, yeah, I think he'll have doubts being out that long. Um, I know he wanted an, an easier fight to come back against, and I know Matchroom wouldn't give him it. So, you know, I'm looking forward just to getting there and, you know, getting straight to work and putting it on. Obviously, had a great card in us. I think one fight in particular I've seen a lot of great reaction to is the Kevin Ajaka and Troy Williamson fight. Just want to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, it's a good fight. It's an interesting fight. Um, as Kevin seemed not to take the fight, and I think Eddie was given off about that. Then, um, it was an interesting situation. Just from a viewer's point, from for me, I was watching, going, Ooh, uh, is this a trouble in parties here? Or what's going on?" But Obviously, with the show being announced in Belfast, I think it probably was put to Keegan. He was like, yeah, I'll take it in Belfast 100%. And 
I think it's a good fight. If you're going on talent, you lean towards Keevan, 100%. But if you're going on you know, toughness and that dog in him is, is Troy Williamson. He's a tough, tough character and will just keep coming non-stop. And I think getting into this fight, he'll have the mental advantage because he's seeing him saying, no, I'm, I'm, doesn't want the fight. He's not ready for the fight yet or whatever it was said. Um, but now the fight is here, so it'll be an interesting one. I think it's a good one for the card, uh, if it's well. Um, and uh, unfortunately, I won't get to watch it because I'm fighting myself. But I would like to watch it. Um, another one I would like to watch was, in my opinion, probably should could be main event is uh, Terrell McKenna versus Lewis Crocker. I think that's a, a cracking fight. Um, that was our first main event before I decided the. To come in and steal the party over, but um, what a fight that will be! I think, and you know, it's a it's a hard hard fight for both guys. It'll it'll be good to see what Lewis has, and good to see what Tyrone can bring. Um, so it's an interesting fight. Uh, both our guys with Colin boxing, so I'm not here to go. This guy's gonna win. That guy's gonna win. I'm I'm here just to go. That's a fight to keep your eye on because who knows how that goes. I mean, Mick, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes after that fight, trying to obviously congratulate the winner on one hand and then console whoever was to be the hard. loser on the other. It's hard. And who knows, it might be a draw, it might be all right. <laughs> but uh, like I think it's it's a real interesting fight. Um, Lewis is a big guy, uh, big puncher. Everybody talks about how, how powerful he punches. Jerome's just a complete dog. He will just keep going and going and going and that, and that kind of stop and, it's it's over ten rounds, I think. So it'll be interesting to see her her goes up at the halfway mark. Mick, obviously you're returning at one thirty. Um, we did our interview three weeks back. Like I say, you mentioned you you had every intention to drop to one two six. What's yeah. changed there? Opportunities, man. You know what I mean. This 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 came in front of me. Um, and uh, I was saying, okay, well we've got eight or so weeks. I'm not too heavy. I could do. I could probably make one two six. It might be a little bit of a push, but it can make it. And then uh, they can uh, say, oh, well, Jordan's partly moving up. And I says, okay, I'll fight at 130. It's, it's no problem. Um, gives me more strength, more more time to do some more strength and you know, put an extra bit of muscle on or an extra bit of weight on. And obviously yourself and top rank parted ways, hence we still being with Matchroom. Is it just a one fight deal? Do they have an option on you at all? No, we have a few, they have a few fights lined up. Um, Unsure about what the next fight is, but we'll see once once we come to that. And obviously, an interesting results at the weekend. Um, no madness, but just, just the baffles me at times. It baffles me, but you know it was a great fight the way it lasted. I mean, let's obviously touch on that, and but at the end of it, bring yourself into the equation. Um, Lee Wood, you know you're you're too familiar for probably your own comfort as to what he can do to pull a result yeah. out of the bag and he did it again this past weekend what did you make of the fight and obviously the stoppage I was just saying this guy this guy's blessed <laughs> he's blessed he has the luck he has the luck of the gods there because there's no way someone can devise a training plan to take a beating for whatever he's however many rounds it goes and then pull a shot out because if that's the training plan Oh, I feel sorry for the boxer. Um, but uh, nah, for Palladium. Uh, Josh, Josh had a great performance. Was hurt in the first round, hurt in the second round, kind of. Uh, and then just started to run away with it, and kind of got too greedy and just got got clipped. Um, no, but you could tell the eight did have the power advantage in that one because he was hurt. The Josh was hurt. Um, early and then obviously the shot came and uh, and finished and a great finish and I had a stoppage. Could should he have had got him in? Should shouldn't he have? I don't really know. I know that like he turned around the, on it, but he had no there was no sign of turning around. They looked like it was. You could have thought it was over, but um, it's it's a hard one. Uh, because if you're in Josh's you're you're saying, yeah, I should I I was going to turn around on it. And if you're in the referee shoes, you're going, you weren't showing me that. So I can't can't say it. They should have probably waited. And then said, look, you're probably looking back on it. Probably should have just waited and looked into his eyes and then made the decision. But he waved it up before he even got to do that. Um, But yeah, great fight. Great fight. How it lasted.
obviously there was a lot of talk in the end of the fight about how Lee Wood would feel making weight. Obviously, Ben said after the fight, or probably before, sorry, that he hasn't really felt comfortable with Lee making weight since the victory against Kanju. Um, what did you feel like it was a flat performance from Lee after those first couple rounds? Did you feel like it seemed to be that the weight was draining him? No, no, I just think that stale, it's just his stale. I think you know, he has the equalizer kind of thing, but you know, I think Josh's stale was just was on it and, and was able to kind of get in and do what he wanted to do. Uh, I thought when Lee was so far, he was, he was very good, and actually, when he when he ended up clipping him, he was so far. And you know, I think if you look back at some of Josh's performances again, so far, he's not the biggest fan of them. Um, I think that's where Lee had most of his, most of his success. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't think it was anything that we had. I know he struggles with it. I think I seen Josh saying something about IVs and stuff or no drip need or something he put up on his post. And you know, it's, it's it is illegal, like so you can't really you don't know if it's true or not. But um, you hear these things. Uh, but if he's doing that, then he's he's hydrating. Well, it's no problem. So. And, and and in fairness, the much punches he does take throughout the fight, and we all be not, he may not be knocked out, but he's taken a lot of damage like, throughout those through his last good few fights, bar the Lara rematch where he kind of stuck to the game plan and didn't call, but he's taken a lot of damage like, which isn't good. I mean, let's obviously bring um yourself into the equation there. You, you know, to gain going back to our last interview, you said you'd fight the winner or the loser of that. I imagine that came up in conversation with Eddie Hearn. Just stick with the winner for an obviously Lee's made no secret he wants to fight at the city ground. I asked Lee, I asked Josh, I asked Eddie, you know, kind of if you're going to fight there and you're going to probably get as close to packing out as possible, you need another big domestic name. With yourself and with Josh, there's that rivalry yep. already there. You've both fought him, two unbelievable fights. Where do you think you, you sit in that queue? Obviously, Cordina has been mentioned as well. Ben Davison said he loves the Navarrete fight. But where do you think you sit in that queue of, say, you you four fighters? I think Navarrete fight won't happen. Definitely not. The Cordina fight may happen, but it's all wrong for Lee, in my opinion. Um, he's beat me and Josh. We both could do it. Why would like, you? Obviously, if you're, if you're yourself, you're going to go... Maybe I'll take one of those ones because we'll still sell it. I have mental edge over them, so to say, because I have victories over them. Um, so we'll go for one of them. And you know, if you look at the fights, you probably prefer to go for Josh over me if you're him, because you know obviously it wasn't as as long, and you were able to hit him a lot more than what he hit me. So who knows? Um, I would love to the the fight him at the city ground. would not bother me at all. Um be an interesting one and I know it would sell very, very well and I know it for Josh would sell very well. Um so yeah, um he's he's the boss. He's the boss, he gets the decision, so it's on him. Obviously, the immediate aftermath, you know, we've seen Lee posting over social media. He, he has no qualms of giving Josh a rematch uh, and doing it at the city ground. But let's say if it was you, how he much never said that about me, did he? Yeah. He never said, he never mentioned that about me. He never says he'll have a fucking rematch, man. Um, and I think, I think the Josh one probably is more de- more decisive than 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 my one. Like you know what I mean? And um, fucking hell, still fucking. I was going. I see. I look back at it now. I go, Jesus Christ! Like how the fuck did that happen? And it was more fatigued than anything because if you look at that fight right? Like you look at Josh's fight. You hurt Josh. First round, probably second round more so, uh, and then got him out. Um, with my fight, I wasn't hurt throughout the whole fight until the shot to Donald. So, yeah, um, and I, sh- I didn't show any, like, I wasn't buzzed, there was not nothing throughout that fight until the end, and that was just pure fatigue, man. Uh, but Mick, how do you prepare for? Obviously, you, you you know we know everybody knows you know you yeah. know Josh know the power that Lee possesses in both his yeah. hands. How, how do you prepare for that to stay so mentally switched on for twelve rounds? Because in your fight, you know m- I, most people had you winning that fight comfortably. Yeah. Um, same with Josh's fight. How do you stay so mentally switched on so that you don't fall into the scenario both of you guys did? 
I don't know, mate. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't do it. <laughs> nah, you just need to be on it, and and just everything's switched on. These you just need to be on the ball the whole time. I'm not, not overcommit at times. Not kind of press too much when you don't need to. Just take your time, pick your spots, and uh, I think it can be done that way. But who knows? Like you know, what I mean, for a him, gotta give him respect, man. He's went and done. Done stuff that nobody's done, the really hasn't he? The, how, how he's done the way he's kept coming back from these fights. It's fucking, I'm like, this guy has some deep with the devil or some shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> What's going on? But uh, no, nah, fair play, well done, Mick. well done, fair play to you, Mick. I know you might be somewhat biased. Obviously, we had a terrific atmosphere on Saturday night. How did that compare to when Man, you the one me and Lee fought? It was way better. If anybody who was there who was at both fights, you have to fucking say it was way better. It was, and w- one thing from both sides, it was just more hostile. Like I was expecting that one to be more hostile because it was Lee football day, football fans, and you know, Lee versus thing. But I suppose fucking Ireland versus England is a little bit is a little bit different, doesn't it, than football? So, uh, yeah, probably, probably, probably that. But nah, the atmosphere at our fight, I think, was much better. Was much better, much more loud, much more crazy. Um, and then the fight itself obviously packed much more drama throughout it. So that's probably why as well. You know what I mean? And you know, it was it was great. The 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 old fans even on Saturday they were fantastic, and the boys they done what they had to do, and they both fought very very well. Um, you know, Josh boxed really well throughout the fight, and uh, Lee. Just done what Lee does, didn't he? Um, yeah. So you know, I was watching the fight, going, "How the fuck did I lose? How the fuck did I lose?" But I suppose it's just boxing. Well, that's that these things happen, isn't it? I mean, it's it's boxing. That's why people love the sport. You're in the realm of the unknown when you're in the old boxing game. So anything can happen at any time. I know obviously your preference would be um to face Lee as the winner of that fight this past weekend, but when you look at Josh Warrington, the performance he gave, he said he has he, he's probably most likely going to move up to 130 himself. Where does he kind of stand in your pecking order and the version you saw? Uh, wouldn't bother me fighting Josh. Would not bother me fighting Josh would be a fight I would love to have. Um as I said before, the winner or the loser, it wouldn't really matter. Uh both were still massive fights. Josh Josh just boxed them fantastic until the point then he seems to fight in spurts. You know, there's a times there where he probably could have got him out of there. I think, you know, if he had his press harder and harder and harder, at times he was all over the joint and I was going, What the fuck's going on here? But Josh would have fought in spurts, he would have fought here and then took a rest, moved, 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 and then went again. But I think he left a little bit too too much of a gap in between because when he fought Frampton, he done the same thing, but the gaps in between the the spurts were not as long. By Josh's own admission, obviously in the round it got stopped. To, he obviously he had a point deducted, and he felt like that kind that of influenced terrible. his decision. What was your thoughts on that? Terrible. Ter- I I don't know why it would influence his decision. It influenced but... Josh's kind of um, decision to kind of be a bit more open to try and win back the round. I that's silly. Um, and I suppose that's just something that happens in the heat of the moment. You make sometimes you make silly decisions, but and that, as I say again, that is boxing. Um, but the point I think was terrible. I'm going, what the fuck? Like he just threw a punch. Lee moved his head. It went behind his head. I like even even the first kind of like where he said about the back of the head. It was more sort of Lee going, you no know, pointing to his head. I'm going, these aren't. But it's not like he's holding him by the head and hitting him. He's throwing shots and they're going around the back of his head, but he's he's aiming for his head. So you can't really warn him, but I think that was, that was a bad, a bad point. I d I didn't I didn't like that. And I actually was there now, but that's fucking terrible. I should never have got that point. But that's boxing. Mick, obviously, you'll have, you'll have to kind of get through your fight, come through that with a victory before you can start to progress towards where, whatever's next for you. One other name I wanted to throw at you is uh, Maurizio Lara. Obviously, we, we've just seen him come off the back of a defeat to Wood, but he's still well-known across these shores. Would he be of any interest, or is he very much looking towards the other guys? It's the other two for me at the minute. You know, I mean, they're the, they're the biggest the money ones for me, or else a belt. Um, Lara kind of falls into that who needs him club, doesn't he, at the minute? Um, 
But for me, the ones that make sense, business sense, is, is one of those two, winner or loser, or a shot at the belt. So that's where I'm at. And Mick, just whilst I've got you a few thoughts, I want to get your thoughts on. Obviously, I saw Sonny Edwards there on the weekend. He's got a terrific fight on the horizon with Bam Rodriguez. Just get your, your take on that. You know, I think Sonny's a very, very hard man to beat for anybody. And Bam, I've been a fan of, fan of Bam for a long time. Uh, I love the saying, love how he went and beat some of the some of the greats of his division. Um, but I just think Sonny's stayed is, is all wrong for him. And I stayed for, for the majority of the division because he's trying to hit a guy who you couldn't hit him with a handful of race if you threw him. He moves that much and is that kind of stick. So, um, yeah, I'm going for Sonny by decision. A very good domestic fight on the horizon. Uh, next weekend, Joshua Boatzi and Dan Aziz. Mick, just again, your, your take. Yeah, um, no, I like both guys, so it's hard for me to go, oh, I think this, but I'm just going off you know, who I think and... and who has the more pedigree, in my opinion, is, is Josh. And, you know, if Josh isn't switched on, no no doubt Dan can go out there and dog him and get a win. Um, But I think, you know, on my expectations of Josh and how I think of him as a fighter, I think, you know, he should go in there and do the business. Uh, Mick, obviously, in a couple of weeks' time as well, we see uh, Tyson Fury and Francis and Garnu share a ring. I imagine you, like, for most of the boxing doesn't fraternity... Go, doesn't go past six rounds. Doesn't Do you expect any, any trouble from Francis? No. Not, not at all, really. Uh, and I've said this in a few, to a few people when they ask me about it. If you put Fury in the cage, he's dead. It's the same if you put Nag- Naganu in the ring. Fury will kill him. It's going to be easy. And whether or not he plays around and messes about, I don't think, like, you can't say Nagano has half the power as a boxer as Deontay Wilder. And also, punching in a boxing stance, which he's not used to kind of thing, is all different. So his power, which he has in MMA, does not cross over. I don't think so anyway. It's the same with, like, McGregor. If you looked at it, you know, when he fought Floyd, it was his, his one punch KO par and MMA didn't cross over. So I just I, I don't think I don't think he he stands a chance. Uh, and Mick, just kind of moving forwards with that, there's always talk of the Fury Usyk fight potentially taking place by the back end of this year. Do you understand maybe why fans are a little dubious uh, with that fight taking place? Maybe? I'm dubious. I'm dubious. Uh... If it happens, it doesn't happen this year. Um, definitely doesn't happen that close to Christmas for Fury. And I don't think it happens until they step into the ring. Simple as that, Luke. So I'm not even getting my hopes up, not thinking about it. Not, I don't even want to talk about it until it's fake week. I'll speak about it in fake week. But in the build-up, it's not happening until they're in the ring. All right, Mick, it's a pleasure as always to catch up with you. I'm going to leave you to obviously enjoy the rest of your day now and get ready for your second session on the horizon. I don't envy you when it comes to that, but I hope it's a good one. So thank you for speaking to me and good luck with the rest of your camp. Thank you, mate.